This vlog is going to be all about corners, so why they're important, how to improve them, exercises to improve them, what you should be asking of your horse in the corner and much more, so let's get into it. Hey guys, so in this vlog, I am going to get straight to the point. It's gonna be all about corners, why they're important, how to improve them, exercises to improve them, and whatever else I can think about. Um, because if you guys have been following my journey recently, you will realize that I had a big kind of like epiphany moment with why I feel like my tests are going wrong and I'm not getting as many marks and it was because I was right I, I like I just was not practicing my corners at home um I was so focused on the movements that I was forgetting the the like sewing the movements together you know the stitching I was trying to think of something really clever to say then but there we go um so yeah that's what we're going to be talking about okay so let's first talk about why corners are important um so the first thing is obviously for test riding um if you have a dodgy corner so say the horse um sort of rushes through it falls in um is against your leg uh loses the balance in the corner then that is going to have a big effect on the move you do after the corner and you have to think when you're going around a test the corners come up quite a lot um so even when you're doing prelim and say you're gonna do a 20 meter circle or you're gonna do um, across the diagonal, it's so important that you give yourself that time because if you think about when you have to go marker to marker, if you have a dodgy corner, you're already at the marker before you're turning um, and it really doesn't help with the balance or anything. And then as you um, go up the levels and the movements get harder, it's even more important because um, you need a lot more balance for those moves. So that is why they're really important for test riding. The other reason as well that I've found is they have really helped with my training in the fact of I know when the horse is really with me. So if the horse tries to skirt around the corner, run through it, like all those things I've explained, I know that the horse is not truly with me. Um, they're a little bit against me. And I've just found from doing this, it really comes out in the corners. I think as well it's that ultimate like are you like are you with your horse are they listening to you are they on the aids um can you half halt them can you push them forwards can you move them off your right leg your left leg um so that's really important so how we go about improving the corners or introducing the corners um with the horses really does depend on a few things Firstly, it depends on the age of the horse. Um, so for example, if you're riding like a three or four year old, um, or again, maybe even not the age, maybe like the level of the horse, I wouldn't take like a very, very novice horse or a very, very young horse deep into the corners because that's too hard for them physically and it's gonna throw them off balance. Um, so what I often do is think of doing like a half 20 meter circle either end of the arena um, instead of going into the corners because um, this encourages the horse to stay in balance um, and it encourages the horse to stay through, listen to the outside rein, listen to the inside leg. What's really important when you're doing this with the young horses um, or a novice horse, don't just think because I'm not going into my corners that means that I don't have to think about them. You still have to think about them. So say on that half 20 meter circle, you still need to be thinking, is the horse leaning on my inside leg? Are they in my outside rein? Are they staying forwards and pushing around that turn? Even though it's easier, it still needs to be like a good quality, if that makes sense. Okay, next up is the older horses, maybe a little bit more advanced, maybe a little bit stronger. And again, you might be thinking, well, how do I know when they're ready? You can always test it and see how the horse um, finds it. I do have to say though with this, even on the older horses who are ready, they they do struggle when you first start teaching them to do the corners. You might feel like they get a little bit tired. Um, you'll feel like the way of going might drop a little bit. And your job as a rider is to go, okay, can I help the horse through this? Or is it actually getting worse through?
through me doing this. And again, this is where it's not black and white. I can't give one rule for everything. Um, you do need to sort of um, feel your way through it a little bit. I'm just giving different examples. So anyway, um, for example, like Wilfred, who's a Grand Prix horse. When I started like working him in the corners, this horse can do Piaf Passage, one's pirouettes. He struggled in the corners, okay? So it's kind of a thing if you have to go, right, they have to build strength in that area. Um, he's not used to it. I have been ignoring them for most of our life, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult for him. Um, but when, yeah, when you are ready to start introducing them and you feel like the horse is ready, um, a few ways that I found really useful and I have been told so many times, go into your corners, use your corners, and for a day I'm like, yeah, cool doing it and then I forget and I'm like I go off thinking about something else and then I go and do a test and I'm like oh I haven't done my corners properly so I needed something that was going to mentally remind me to do it all the time um, so this is why I set up this so in each of my corners in the arena I have got this little V shape here and I've just set it out with poles if you don't have poles you can always put a cone in the corner but I've just found this is really really useful as you can see I've got one there too and then the top end so when it comes to determining how far to have the poles away from the wall um, I all I think is the corner of that V needs to be in the apex of the corner so there's a straight line from the corner of the poles to the actual corner um, but then distance wise again it really does depend on what your horse can handle. So I have multiple horses coming in here. So I don't have them ridiculously close. The advanced horses could probably have them closer. Um, but I, I'm riding some six-year-olds as well that I want them to still be able to go around that. And that's kind of comfortable for the six-year-olds. I'll show you the distance at the moment. Um, but then with the older horses, it's just a trigger for me to go up corner and then I ride it well. But depending on your horse's age to how far you want to put them in the corners, um, I'll just show you what they're at at the moment. And for those of you that like to know properly, I'll do my feet. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Okay, so about 10 steps. So that is why corners are important and one of my main ways of improving them is using this exercise. So as I am coming into the corner, um, what I'm thinking about is, is the horse in my outside rein? So do I feel like I've got control of the outside shoulder? Do I feel like I've got a contact on the outside rein? So that's basically the control of the outside shoulder, um, the outside of their neck, basically everywhere on the outside of the horse. Um, with my outside rein and my outside leg supporting. And then I think, is the horse around my inside leg? And what I mean by this, it's so important, is that I feel like their rib cage is kind of molded around my leg. Not that they're pushing through my inside leg, not that they're kind of leaning on it, not that they're falling away from it either, because we don't want to overdo that, but that they're kind of like softly around my inside leg. Um, there are loads of different exercises to help getting this if you don't feel like your horse is achieving that. So for example, the main one that you need to start working on is a turn on the forehand. I think it's so underrated um, as an exercise. I always do my turn on the forehands out of walk and I'm just really thinking about the horse giving in the rib cage, moving away from my leg. Um, and that is basically what I'll explain in the corner. I need that little bit of a feeling to get a good corner. So um, yeah, are they around my inside leg? The next one is, can I have a little bit of inside flexion? Um, and what I mean by inside flexion is not too much inside bend. So I always think of bend being like at the lower part of their neck and then flexion being up at the pole. So they can have that little bit more of a, um, yeah, just bend through the pole. And what I find with that is it really helps them stay uphill. Um, and also you want to be careful you don't get too much bend in your corners because if you, the more you bend your horse to the inside, the more they're going to fall onto the outside shoulder. Um, and that's again why it's really important that you have your outside rein. 
So you want to think, I've got them on the outside rein, I've got them around my inside leg, I can have a little bit of inside flexion. And then the next important part is that you can move the horse's body where you need to. And what I mean by this is, um, so for example, with the older horses, what I always think about when I come into a corner is placing the inside hind leg between the two front legs. So I am a little bit, a little bit, this is important, you don't want to do this too much of you'll clang there hind legs on the wall, a little bit pushing their quarters out, but that's just enough that the inside hind leg then places between the two front legs and this engages them more, this stops them falling around the corner and leaning onto my inside leg. Um, and this again really helps when I'm setting them up to go on a diagonal um, to do like, I don't know, the changes or the extended canter and it really just makes sure that they're with me. Okay, so a really common problem that we see with the corners, or I definitely struggled with the corners, is um, having the horse rush through them because it's hard for them. Um, a lot of horses rush through them or you have the opposite problem where it's really hard so they slow down, lose engagement, stop pushing. So an exercise that helps both of, of these things um, is the um, trot, walk, trot exercise through the corner. So what you do is you're coming into the corner and you walk in good time before it. You walk the horse through the corner. Say the ones that want to rush, this is where you can give them a little bit of a half halt. Say the ones that want to unengage, this is where you can actually engage them because half halting the horse and transitions also helps engage the horse as well as stopping the runoff. It's a beautiful exercise that works both ways. Um, you walk them through the corner and then you trot them out of the corner. So to start with, on the younger ones or the, the not so established horses, I would say just do that on the long sides and then um, just walk the short sides. But as you get a little bit more, um, a little bit stronger, the horse gets a little bit more knowing what it's doing. You can add the trot in on the short sides, but it does come up quickly. The one thing I'd say with this exercise is sometimes it gets a little bit messy before it gets better. That's completely normal. You have to sort of stick with it. Um, this exercise as well can be done in canter, so canter, walk, canter, that's really helpful. Um, and also it can be used all the time. So say you are running through a test or you're working on your test work, there's no reason you can't put that transition in um, as you're going through it, but just make sure that you have run through the test without doing the transition before you go to the show. Um, I would say as well, uh, the reason this exercise is so good, it basically teaches the horses to half halt and rebalance in the corner and also to engage in the corner. So it's a win, win one. Another really, really good exercise, if you feel like your horse kind of um, leans in on your inside leg around the corner, um, the poles obviously will really help, but what's an um, amazing thing to do as well is to do 10 meter circles in the corner. Um, if you feel like the horse is really struggling, you might want to do the 10 meter circles first, just get those established around the outside of the arena, but then start doing them in the corners. So I have also, to make this exercise um, a little bit harder, put a pole on the center line so that I know the horse isn't overshooting the center line. Um, and sort of give them a little bit of a perimeter, give myself a perimeter so I, I ride more accurately. But what this does, it teaches the horses to wait in the corner, it teaches them to bend in their rib cage around the corner. Um, it's a really good strengthening exercise as well. I spend a lot of time, especially with the six year olds at the moment, working on their 10 meter circles in canter, making sure that they are pushing, staying through, staying round. So that is a really um, good exercise as well to help you. So that's basically everything I have to say around corners. Um, the last thing that I wanted to add though is that I do do my corners in the warm up and the cool down when I'm stretching the horses off because I think it's important to still do it then. Um, but yeah, that is basically it. So I really hope that you have found this vlog interesting, this tutorial interesting. If you have, I'd love to hear what you thought. So just pop a comment and I will get back to you. If you found it useful as well, please do share it onto your social media platforms. The easiest way is through Instagram stories and just tag me in it, which is towers432 and I can see what you thought. If you feel like a friend needs to see it, send it to them. 
Um, and let me know if you want me to do more kind of tutorial style vlogs like this. And I'll see you for the next one. I swear that, well I don't know, I'm filming. Different bloody angles. No.